Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to yet another Spec Tuesday race. It is Toyota Aquas on Sakuba, which was already not going to be like a great race. So people are going to say like, why are we doing this? This was actually probably one of the best spec races that we have done yet. The idea of having a slow car being driven fast around a really small circuit was exhilarating. Like the entirety of the race was just crazy. Shio was able to get a very quick getaway from the group. But for the rest of the race, he would sit three seconds out ahead of us. Not entirely sure how he was able to pull that off. But the rest of us were just battling amongst ourselves. And it was just absolutely hectic. It was crazy. You had to have the radar turned on. Because you would not be able to tell until somebody was in your doors in the apex. And you didn't even realize that they were coming up way behind. And this was the perfect race for a lot of different reasons. So this is the first race that for spec series I turned on boost meaning that those who were further away, you know, further back in the pack, were able to catch up to the group. I noticed with our Dragon Trails Garden race with the Alfa Romeo 4C GT3 cars that when somebody spun out, that was the race. They were done. And I didn't like that. I like the idea that when you're in a spec race, it is close amongst yourselves. But your mistakes shouldn't be so punishing. So by turning boost on, we're able to drag the people who are having mistakes back up further. And to be quite frank, there weren't any massive mistakes. I think there was only once or twice where, you know, there would be an accident where somebody would fall off the track, but then they'd come back on and then they would be able to catch up. The other fun thing is that with the Toyota Aquas is that they are a hybrid car. So it has an electric motor that helps give additional power to the petrol or the gasoline engine. And I completely forgot about that when I made this car selection. I was just looking for a slow car, not anything in particular. I'm like, Toyota Aqua was one of the first starter cars when you start up the game. You know, let's just do that. Not thinking much into it. But because it is this hybrid engine motor, it actually has a battery. So much like these massive, these crazy, like, Gran Turismo VGT cars, or like some of these hyper cars that you see with, like, Lamar or whatever, that are, like, 900 PP, is that it has a battery that you can't choose when to deploy. It just kind of deploys. So it will use up the battery as you go down the straights, and then eventually it'll run dry, and then have to slowly rebuild itself until it can be used again. What was interesting with this race is that because we couldn't control when to deploy it, it just kind of went as it decided to. So combining that with a boost meant that we had some crazy amount of catching up where there would be people going down the street where they'd only be going like 75 miles an hour. But then if they had the battery and the boost kicking in, if you were at the very back of the pack i think at some point i was going like 120 miles an hour this car caps at like 82 miles an hour maybe so to have that insane amount of extra speed to catch up meant that there was no way that you could really split away from the pack because as soon as he did everybody else would be catching up so again not sure how Oshio was able to keep that three second lead but the rest of the fighting was absolutely crazy. So I'll play a couple of clips here just to see like how enjoyable it was because it was just exhilarating. Huh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, no, oh, just a no! <laughs> oh, get out oh, of there, cart. I guess some ketchup maybe. Oh. <laughs> Look oh, at this, we're going to go three wide inside. again! Oh. No! Oh, but I got the inside. 
Oh, but he's blocking. Oh, Damn it. Switch back. The switch I like the way you guys are nice. doing back there. Down the middle! Oh, Down oh, the middle! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh practically here. stops in that corner. <laughs> Dude, this is some of the best racing I've had in a while. Right? Like, we're going at it. I you just get out of there. You get out of there. Oh, oh. Just a, God damn it. Hey, God. Oh, God, corner. he's going on the inside. Oh, oh, oh. Two oh. by two, two by two. Yeah, oh, there we go. And you made it stick. Oh, oh shit, I, take I this broke corner the just or, right. Uh, I'm gonna right lose on that. there. <clears throat> Ooh, a little contact behind. Oh, oh no. No, 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 no. My second place! No! <laughs> no, Meg Justin, don't you dare. Don't you take it? No! <laughs> don't be deep! Oh! I gotta get him! I no! gotta get him! Come on! <laughs> no! Oh, oh, Flanders, oh, you're so oh, close! Right there. <laughs> wow! Oh. You guys crossed the line all against each uh, other? Yeah. Basically. That was uh. awesome. So after the race, we're sitting there going like, wow, that's just, that was crazy. I kind of want to do this again. And Drew shows up, and he's like, hey, we guys, are we doing a race or something? And it's like, well, you just missed it. And he goes, well, I'll shoot. And I said, well, why don't we do the Minerberg rate, the full Neuschleifer and the GP, the full 24-hour circuit layout with the Aquas. <laughs> and it was amazing because none of us had a qualifying lap. The, Nur the Nürburgring Green as a whole is a huge track. It's super technical. I've driven it hundreds of times, and I'm still learning it. I'm starting to finally get to a point where I'm like understanding where certain corners are happening. But to have that all happening with all these other drivers who are still trying to figure out the course and we're still trying to figure out this car, it was, again, when we did this next race with Drew, again, similar levels of hecticness. And the best part about it, too, is because the track was so large and we had so many blind corners, there would be times where we'd be approaching a corner and then suddenly it would just come out of nowhere and we'd fall off and hit the wall and we'd get a penalty. So all throughout this race, we knew that coming to the back straight, as the Neuschleifer goes, there's a very extremely long straight at the back side of the course that leads you up to the start-finish line. So all of us are going, okay, who's got what penalties? And if somebody's got more penalties than somebody else, will that be able to scoot them further back in the pack? But then the boost and the battery would kick in, so maybe it's not as detrimental as we think. So there's this extra level of uncertainty that going around the course where we're having incidents, we're trying to stay out of the walls so we don't get as many penalties. But then if we do, maybe there is that side of it that we can get that extra boost and battery working with us that can give us the extra speed down the straight, get us up to 120 miles an hour, and then speed past the rest of the group. So we're having all these fightings amongst one another again super close super competitive and then finally we get to the penalty line here's where the mix-up is who's got the most penalties who's got the least whoever's got the least can get away can i poop you before we get to the timer <laughs> no and am i gone i'm gone i'm going go 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 You're catching me. Yeah. But I'm catching Nate. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We're going to be all at the same time. Come on. Boops. Go oh, 95. Oh, 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 there we go. There we go. Come on. Oh, here we go. No, no, no. Got to beat Matt. Come on. <laughs> here they come. come on, I got I to gotta give Westby the push. Give me the boop. Give oh. me the boop. I'm just going to oh. start my uh, moving oh. chicane here. <laughs> <laughs> The boop has been received. That's a triple boop. Oh god, that helped so much. Oh, let's, no! go. let's go. Let's Come go. Come on. <laughs> let's go. Can we do this too? I. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> I'm still going flat. I actually haven't broken yet. Oh, here oh. we go. This is a oh. dangerous corner. Oh god. Oh, I didn't get oh. any quicker out of that corner oh. than you. Oh. 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 Oh.
Oh, oh that was almost <laughs> enough to get him. Here, give me another push. <laughs> oh, I ran out of battery. <laughs> Oh, oh, it slowed me down again. Oh. Hey! <laughs> hey! 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 It was the same thing again. Duke, 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 duke. See, see how much fun that is, Drew? Oh, it was a blast. Great. <laughs> there you have it. Just another crazy ending to an absolutely crazy race. So Thursday, we don't have a race because it is the 4th of July and a lot of people are out with their family celebrating. But we then focus on the Sunday race. Thursday race, we'll have another time. That's fine. We'll make up for it. But the Sunday race was going to be interesting. It is the first race of Shio's Sunday series races. Again, start of season three. And we're starting to think, okay, what can we have as a great kickoff race? And he decided any Ferrari, 850 power points on Daytona, which honestly... If you think about it, it doesn't sound too interesting, but with the Ferraris, they are incredibly powerful. And with Daytona, there is a huge top end speed. So if you detune it so far to get down to the 850, if you start with like a Ferrari FXXK and detune it, well, you don't have the top line speed. You might have a little bit better fuel economy. But then you might have too much downforce where, again, your top speed is limited. If you work on a car and get the transmission tuned right and bring it all the way up, well, then your fuel economy is bad because normally these are naturally aspirated cars that don't have the additional turbo to be added to it. So the fuel economy is just horrible. So there's this weird sense of strategy of like, okay, so what do you do? Which side do you do? Do you make sure that your car is tuned as fast as it can go but then you start working with the fuel modes during the race or do you just neuter the car to make sure that you can get the fuel mileage that you can knowing that your top speed is limited so in all honesty i probably tried about four five different ferraris i was originally going to go with the ferrari f8 tributo the 2019 model i had a pretty good tune on it where it actually felt right and that I had to use traction control too to make sure that it just worked but I noticed the fuel mileage I would do an out lap I do a lap and then I'd immediately have to do an in lap because it would only last for three laps I'm going well this this isn't good and a lot of people were talking about using the Enzo so I'm like okay so maybe I should try a tune on the Enzo because I was still testing out the Enzo, I was inspired by the LaFerrari's test mule car that I wanted to kind of make like a test mule Enzo. So I, div I made this really nice livery that I don't think I will actually share because if I do, my account might be banned because it is making Ferrari not look pretty. So I'll just kind of showcase it here and I'm quite proud with how it turned out. It was really nice. It was really fun to use it as the test car. But the problem that I had with both the Enzo and the F40 was that I'd get to the banked corner and for whichever reason, the back end would get caught on the banked corner, lose traction. Again, this is at top speed when we're going around the banked corners on, on Daytona. And then it would just throw me into the infield and it's like when it loses traction you can't recover it so i'm on race day i'm joining early i'm talking with the group saying hey what are you guys doing and they said hey man we're sharing the enzo tune in chat try it and i did and i don't know what they did but it worked i could finally take these corners and and not have an issue so i'm like all right this is this is the way to go and again, I'm noticing the Enzo, instead of able to do it in three laps, is able to last four laps. And with a 20-lap race, I'm pitting five times. This still isn't going to work. So eventually, I decided, you know, I'll do a qualifying lap on fuel mode one on race softs. But I'll do the race on race softs, but in fuel mode six. I think a lot of people had the same idea. So half the grid was on Enzo's. The other half was on various other Ferraris. And it was actually really interesting race so a lot of races it's you can kind of tell who's going to be quick who's not going to be quick but with this race much like IndyCar we couldn't 
actually really tell. There, it was all about the strategy. Because somebody can be quick, but if they have to pit six times, they're not going to end up well. But if there's somebody that's kind of slow, but they only have to pit once, maybe they can squeak out at the end ahead of everybody. Because everybody's got to pit five, six times, and they only have to do it twice or once. And they're able to make it make it work. So throughout this race, everybody's trying to race as hard as they can on field mode six for a lot of it. But they're not trying to race too hard to the point where it's like it might screw their race up if they have too many accidents. Because they're just trying to be in their own lane, keeping an eye on their fuel, pitting when they need a pit, keeping an eye on their tires, and just seeing what works. So I had done this, I practiced a lot with the F8 Tributo and did a little practicing with the Enzo. I just picked up the tune that actually works, so I'm still trying to figure out the breaking points and whatnot. I'm dealing with the fact that the soft tires are degrading faster. I'm normally one to just sit on hard tires in fuel mode 6 and just last the entire race, but dealing with the soft tires too. I had to worry about degradation, so figuring out that one lap's breaking point is not the same as the next lap's. And I think ultimately that was my downfall because I get out of the pits, the tires are not warmed up yet, they're cold, so I'd have issues there. They would finally get warmed up and have a couple of good laps, but then I'd have issues with track limit penalties as I'm still trying to figure out where it'd be. And then the tires would start degrading faster, so then I'd miss a braking point and then have another track limit penalty. So I think there's only one or two laps, or just a few handful of laps out of the 20 laps where I didn't have a penalty, just because it's just dealing with all of that that I was discussing, just the degradation and the tires not being warmed up. And, and ultimately, this is just solidifying my opinion that I should just kind of stick with medium or hard tires from here on out. I'm just not good with soft tires in these situations. So a good portion of the race, I was racing with Flanders. Like, there would be instances where he would get me on the corners and then on the, on the banked corners, I'd be able to get him, get that top speed, and then I'd have to serve my penalty that I had gotten from the lap previous and then he'd pass me I'd catch up to him and then I'd follow him through all the infield corners and then again I'd get him in the straight line I'd have a penalty to serve from the last lap and then he'd get in front of me and so there are a lot of back and forth I think we're on fairly similar fuel strategy too so as I, I had a feeling that he was going to be my race but as the race progressed, there are more people coming into the into the picture and other people fading away. It was just very interesting to see how dynamic this race was. Because again, you couldn't ever really tell who was ahead of whoever because you could see somebody was ahead of you, but you wouldn't know if they've done their pit yet or if they just got out of their pit. So there is an absolute amazing amount of uncertainty until we get to the last couple of laps. I'm sitting here where I'm hitting every six laps, so I'm starting to do some math in my head. Okay, so I pit on lap seven, I pit on lap 13. Crap, I'm going to have to pit again on lap 19. And I'm starting to go, okay, so I'm going to have to adjust my strategy a little bit. So during this last stint, I am trying my hardest to do all sorts of short shifting, do all sorts of making sure that I'm like coasting when I can, but it's Daytona, so you have to be at a high top speed, so you're using a lot of fuel. So during the infield, I'm making sure that I'm using as little fuel as possible, and then, you know, when I'm getting to like the bus stop on, on the straightaways, that I'm starting to lift and coast a little bit sooner to the preserve some of my fuel as much as I can. At this point, I've used the majority of my NAS having these little close races with Flanders, and then Pavin starts to come into the fold, and I'm going, okay, so is he faster? Is he slower than me? Like, what's what's the pace? And I noticed, too, that Ring was also way up, up, up ahead of everybody for a lot of the time. But he had to pit pretty close to the end, so I know he's coming up, I'm dealing with Pavin, and then we get to this. I got it, guys. Good strategy, Jay. Out of fuel. Ah! Out of fuel. God. Out of fuel. I ran out of fuel at the start. Ah. Oh, I'd have done good so... if I hadn't run out. Oh, can I beat him? Ooh. Can I beat Pave? Got it! Nice! Ooh. I ran out of fuel. Oh, oh, man. Man. oh, and I got third because Ring's two second. Holy. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, I got him by two oh, tens. Yeah. Holy crap. Nice, guys. Wow. So, yeah, as you can tell, Jay just finishes way ahead of everybody. And then there's just like three of us that are finishing well within like a couple of seconds. And the rest of the grid, too, also seems to be finishing fairly close. And I'm sitting there going, even if I didn't have all those penalties, could have there been a chance that I got up close? Could I have saved myself 12 seconds to the front? Maybe. I think there's possibly that chance, but I'm not going to sit here and play these what ifs, what ifs. I finished third with the car I really hadn't tested. And even though I had all sorts of track limit penalties and whatnot, I still feel like I got incredibly lucky for a lot of different reasons. And it worked just perfectly that I ran out of fuel at the same time as my competitor. You know, if I knew that I needed to save fuel earlier, how would have that affected lap times? Would have I lost more positions? You know, there's so many things going on, but I think at the end of the day, it was an absolutely exceptional first race to Shio's season three for the Sunday races. And again, I think everybody is incredibly happy with how it turned out. Nobody was really mad. Nobody was really like agitated how the race went. I think everybody was like, damn, that was just great. So again, thanks so much for watching. If you've gotten this far, I'll try to keep these race recaps a little bit shorter. I figured that 45 minutes is a little bit too long there. So if you've enjoyed all of this, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Again, we'll discuss more about some of those Thursday races and next week. Well, I think we'll actually have quote unquote two Thursday races. We'll see. But again, uh, stay tuned for all of that. Again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.